In this section, I'm going to introduce wireless sensor networks. So wireless sensor networks or WSN are the predecessor of Internet of Things. So typically a wireless sensor network consists of large number of sensor nodes densely deployed in a certain area. Sensor nodes are capable of collaborating with one another measuring conditions of their surrounding environment such as temperature, light, sound and vibration. Typically uh, sensor nodes have a limited short range uh, trans transmission capability therefore most of the time uh, they communicate or transfer data through a multi-hop path approach where they send data from one node to the another until it find a station uh, where it has a capability of long range communication. You can see in this kind of uh, figure in the image where we show that there are uh, different cars where uh, each car represent a sensor node and then uh, data pass on to uh, each car and then until it find a base station or a mobile device that has the capability to send the data to the cloud. Characteristics of a sensor network are as follows. So they are typically uh, multifunctional. That means sensor nodes uh, are custom developed uh, based on the requirement of a particular application. They also have a short range communication so usually you need to use multi-hop. They do have operating system, uh, something called a tiny OS, historically a very popular operating system, very bare minimum operating system that could install in an embedded micro microcontroller. They are battery powered uh, and have a limited lifetime, uh, but depending on the communication, you can prolong the battery life into a few years as well. So common applications of wireless sensor networks are uh, temperature measurements, humidity, lighting, air pressure, soil makeup, noise level, vibration. So wireless sensor networks were used in agriculture, farming, uh, air quality monitoring uh, kind of applications. Based on the description I gave so far, you might have already felt that wireless sensor networks are somewhat similar to Internet of Things. Uh, in some way, it is correct, but it is really important to understand the differences and the relationship between the sensor networks and Internet of Things. So let's compare the sensor networks to Internet of Things. First, in sensor networks, the nodes are pre-built and homogeneous. They are built for a particular purpose and then they are pre-built. Uh, they are very similar. All the nodes are identical. In Internet of Things, there are a lot of opportunistic nature, which means that uh, the sensors you are using in a particular Internet of Things application could be heterogeneous. Some of the sensor nodes may not be deployed by you and you are temporarily getting access to them. And then the nodes of sensor nodes are reconfigurable. Over time, you will be adding more sensors to each node, maybe adding actuator, actuation, uh, and then improving the firmware. But on the sensor network side, these are pre-built, deployed, that's it. And from the uh, research point of view, uh, sensor networks have a strong literature. Uh, there are a lot of theoretical focus on the uh, research. There are a lot of focus on routing protocols. There are a lot of focus on energy. Uh, Internet of Things, uh, the literature or the, the fundamental theoretical pros, uh, approach is very lacking. Uh, less focus on routing because most of the time you will be directly communicating with the gateway, like a one-to-one. -one. Uh, and then there's a lot of applied focus on Internet of Things compared to the sensor network, which is very theory based. If you take the development of the sensor network, there are a lot of simulation based uh, uh, research and development going on in the sensor networks. In Internet of Things, there are a lot of applied, less on the simulation part. 
and then the gateway. So usually uh, in the sensor network, uh, it uses a multi-hop uh, to reach to a gateway. So it uh, moves from one sensor node to the other, to the other, and then after many hops, it will reach a gateway. In IoT, usually the edge device will reach a gateway uh, at, in a single hop because each edge device is connected to a single gateway. Sensor networks are uh, mesh-based, so it is non-IP. There's no uh, particular IP address dedicated for each sensor network. Uh, Internet of Things is IP-based. What does mean is that uh, you can uniquely identify the edge device and you, will, you can also get data from it and also send command back to it. In the sensor networks, it focuses on sensing. In the IoT, it focuses on both sensing and the actuation. Sensor networks focus on one-way communication. Its job is to send the data to the controller. In Internet of Things, you get the data and then you send the commands back. In sensor networks, you have you focus less on processing on the edge because the sensor nodes are merely uh, devices that collect and pass on the data. It may process some aggregation, but it's not a significant focus on the edge. Uh, in the Internet of Things, uh, there's an increased uh, necessity or a focus on processing on the edge, even more complicated uh, analytics. Sensor networks are less intelligent. They are uh, the primary objective is to uh, sense and give the data to the, uh, the the person who deployed, and then they will analyze the data and make the decision. But the sensor network is a fairly a dumb infra uh, infrastructure. In Internet of Things, uh, sensing infrastructure, uh, the sensor nodes are supposed to be intelligent. They will be intelligent in terms of the context they are in, in terms of the energy, in terms of the task or the, uh, the varying of the requirements because you can now remotely configure. Sensor networks, uh, by the time you deploy, you know pretty much what you want to do. But in IoT, there is a, a chance that you might want to change uh, the approach and then you want to reconfigure, reprogram it. Uh, remotely and then you can uh, do that in IoT. Uh, sensor networks are fairly uh, static in configuration. For example, if you de deploy in a field on agriculture or air quality monitoring or you want to detect uh, the movements of uh, bats in a bat cave, uh, you just deploy them and then uh, that is it. You are not going to uh, change anything uh, most of the time. Uh, but in IoT, it is focusing on very highly dynamic environments. Uh, things are moving. The, the mo mobility is a key one. And also the change of the requirement. For example, uh, depending on the environmental parameters. For example, if you are doing a precision agriculture and then if you want to increase the, the sampling rate when a certain event happens. For example, if you want to understand how the snow impact. So when the snowing, uh, you might want to increase certain parameters or uh, the, the frequency you collect the data in order to get uh, fine fine grain data. So there's a lot of dynamically changing behavior in the IoT bar. So in overall, uh, even though there is no uh, uh, consensus among the community, but roughly speaking, a sensor network uh, could be considered as a small push, uh, portion of IoT. So that's are the uh, key difference between sensor networks and Internet of Things. Sensor systems commonly share several characteristics, such as they are computationally uh, limited in terms of resources and energy. The sensor nodes uh, tend to fail. Uh, they are not very reliable. But the idea is that you will deploy large amount of uh, sensor nodes, so at least few of them will work. Typically, sensor networks are deployed in uh, challenging uh, and harsh condition areas. And the topology of the sensor network might not change frequently. Uh, most of the deployments uh, involve nodes with uh, fixed locations, uh, with only few will have uh, mobile sensors. Each of the sensor nodes uh, comprised of a sensing device 
low power radio and a small storage so the low power radio is usually used to uh, send the data to the next node rather than sending to the cloud so compared to our iot node uh, wireless sensor network nodes are very much constrained and uh, homogeneous and designed to be static let us now look at the energy management within wireless sensor network because some of the ideas that we discuss here are quite relevant to IoT as well uh, conceptually. So the key uh, message is that the local computation in a sensor node does not consume significant amount of energy. So the main source of uh, energy consumption is the radio. This is true for IoT nodes, this is true for sensor network nodes as well. So for example, if you look at a Telos B uh, mood, uh, we call mood or a sensor node, uh, it consumes uh, 1.8 milliampere when the radio is off and the microcontroller is on. And when the radio is on, the energy consumption increased to 21 milliampere. So you can see that there's a significant gap between the on and off of the radio while the microcontroller is on. Even though this particular uh, number may vary from the particular brand or a product, the gap between the radio on and off still still be can be seen in uh, across all microcontroller platforms. In order to save energy, we need to limit the number of radio transmission and how long you uh, take to transmit. At the same time, uh, idle listening also consumes as much power as transmission uh, because you have to keep the uh, radio on pretty much. For example, idly, idle listening would be 23 milliampere and transmitting would be 21 milliampere. Idle listening is uh, wasteful when the average data rate is low. Ideally, you need to think about switching off the radio when it is idling. However, if you switch off, then the transmissions coming from other sensor nodes could be lost. So in the figure, you can see these uh, Telos B nodes, which are widely used in wireless sensor network domain. Important part of energy management within wireless sensor networks is the management of radio duty cycle. A best way to understand the duty cycle is uh, you need to represent it as a ratio. It is a ratio between how long uh, the particular sensor is active or on compared to the time it is off. So for example, if it is one second and then the sensor send the data uh, 10 times, each time it is on for 0 0.1 second. So as shown in the figure, that means that the duty cycle is 10% because 10% of the time of the total duration, the radio is on and then 90% of the time the radio is closed. So the higher the uh, duty cycle, like 90%, which means you are consuming more energy. The less of the duty cycle is better because the more time is switch off. One way to reduce the uh, radio uh, duty cycle is to synchronize the communication. So all the sensors uh, are synchronized into a single clock and they wake up at a precise time and then do the communication and then sleep again. The, the problem is that if the duty cycle is very small, like 0 0.1 second, even uh, some sensors don't wake up at the exact precise time for some reason, or the clock is not synchronized, then the communication would fail. So that becomes a problem. So you need to think about exactly how you're going to do this. However, the synchronized uh, data communication approach might not work depending on the topology. 
For example, if you have a sensor network where it is sequentially passing data from one node to the other, uh, probably you can uh, do some synchronization and make it work. But if it is more like a mesh network or a tree network where one particular node is receiving data from multiple different nodes, then this particular node has to do some more communication or it has to be on for a little bit longer than the other nodes because it is receiving data from multiple sensor nodes. Now they need to be forwarded to the next node. So the more responsibility a particular node has, which means more workload, uh, which means more data to be forwarded. So it has to be switched on. And then the recipient also need to be switched on in order to receive the data. So you could overestimate or underestimate the communication needs um, because the traffic of a sensor network is not equal. So it could be varying depending on the topology. Because if it is like a sequence, like one node after the other, then you can predict uh, the behavior. But if it is a mesh network or a tree network, it becomes quite difficult because the uh, the network traffic is not equal. So the switch on time e uh, shouldn't be equal because the, the more responsible node should uh, will need to be uh, switched on for a little bit longer than the other nodes who might have simple task of just sen sensing the data and forwarding to the uh, data of the next node.